the dark reality? Is they a negative counterpart um, to the you know sweet experience of love or the great expression of the good? Is there a negative counterpart? Are they you know um, kind of opposing um, forces towards that which is good? Our experiences in life, you know. Um, is it all sweet and light? Are our experiences really all sweet and light? You know, if not, what is behind the dark reality of our existence? Because it seems like there is something that is a dark reality, something that is uh, opposed to the good that we wish for, the, the great um, sweet experiences that we are hoping for. There's something that is opposing us when it comes to that. What is that? Is there anything that is behind that? Or should there be? Another question would be, should there be anything really behind that reality? You know, unparalleled terror and inexplicable horror that arises just from nowhere. Like, from nowhere, this terror arises. You know, inexplicable horror arises. Is this terror just a response to our emotional restlessness or is this, you know, or is it just, it's a perplexing uh, mystery or enigmatic reality that is actually really present in our present reality or where we are. There are people who have experienced inexplicable terrors in different situations, circumstances, and, and they knew that they were alone in that particular place, right? But at the same time, they realized that actually they were not alone is this when we speak of you know this the dark realities are we talking about the absence of the good or is is there a reality a tangible reality that is there or maybe this is just you know the turned trick of the wind that has been turned into a fantasy these things they don't really exist it's just us you know demons um, are projections of our imaginations they are really not a real manifestation of the dark presence or dark realities they are just our projections in other words demons evil spirits they don't exist okay let's say they don't exist how do we know that demons cannot or do not exist is there any kind of evidence that we have towards that that demons they don't exist or if we say they do do we have something do we have evidence to say that yes they do and here is the evidence how do we come to terms with uh, the the order of reality, you know, the higher order of reality versus the physical reality, whereby there is an influence from the higher order of reality to the physical reality. There are enigmatic events that are taking place, activities that are taking place, that it's either you believe it or you don't. What do we make of those? How can we make sense of these things? And for us to be able to answer some of these questions here on Bible Hard Talks tonight. Of course, we have our framing questions to really deal with this matter. Um, the questions, mind you, they are not just limited to these ones. Actually, there should have been even more questions. Uh, there should have been even up to 10 questions or more. But because we want to finish the space timely, uh, we just limited this to four questions. And of course, because I don't have the blue tick next to me, which means that I have limited space to really type, you know, questions. So four uh, became the magic number for tonight for these questions question number one are demons and evil spirits conscious of persons and the natural world we are living in a world that is you know um is is a physical reality and this world is not in any way um kind of free from the spiritual um entities there are spiritual entities in our world. Okay, so there are spiritual entities. That's great. Are demons and evil spirits conscious of persons? Do they? Do demons know me as an individual? Do demons? Can demons be sent to attack me, or do I just catch stray bullets? 
if that happens that they don't know me but it's just a straight bullet i was you know at the wrong place at the wrong time and boom the straight bullet boom kind of you know um strike me are evil spirits conscious are they in one way or the other uh conscious of persons in the natural world question number two are demons behind all evil on earth is the dark world there are forces that are behind evil there are forces that are behind dark realities the question is are then demons should we uh, give demons the owner of being behind all these activities in the natural world or there could be other sources there could be other forces that are behind this as question number two there question number three why do demons seem to respond to counter spiritual activities like prayer for example I mean issues of exorcism is is are these realities that we see for example say in the bible we see in the gospels jesus is um practicing uh, exorcism um is this just you know stage play it's not reality there's no there's nothing like exorcism there's nothing like casting out of demons and overpowering evil spirits it's nothing like that is it a reality if it is a reality why do these demons seem to respond to um such um counter uh, spiritual activities like prayer, for example, what makes them respond? That's a very interesting question um, to look at. Qu question number four, which is the last one, is witchcraft real or an imaginary <laughs> reality? When we talk of witchcraft, is it something that is real? Can really, can my life be affected by witchcraft? Is it a reality? Or maybe we're just giving power to people uh, for nothing. This is just it's, it's a mind trick. It doesn't exist. That's where we are on Bible Hard Talks tonight. These are the questions that we are dealing with. And thank you very much that you are here to help us, you know, um, answer these questions and to help us direct this conversation to its focal point tonight. Are demons and evil spirits conscious of persons um, and the natural world? Are demons behind all evil uh, on earth? Why do demons seem to respond to counter spiritual activities like prayer? Is witchcraft real? Or is just, you know, a mind trick it doesn't exist it's not real it's what you believe in if you don't believe in it it can't affect you if you believe in it oops then it will affect you that's where we are on bible hard talks tonight uh ladies and gents thank you very much for being here thanks for being part of the conversation tonight we will just go for the kill we're gonna go straight to it here on bible hard talks our target time of course is 11 30 muscle royalty is here with the timer please do respect the timer ladies and gents as you're about to make your contribution try to put your thoughts together and think about five minutes close your eyes and then open them again and then close your eyes again and think five minutes five four three two one five minutes and then i'll uh, put your thoughts together and shoot we would like to hear from you uh big time but of course we would like also to hear you and see you uh, responding and respecting uh the time they that muscle reality will put forward for us tonight as we rock and roll with this conversation bring your thoughts bring your experiences bring your knowledge bring uh, everything that you can bring to make this conversation what it's supposed to be tonight do interact with us of course on the tf bible hard talks hashtag bible hard talks we want to hear from you and of course do shoot those dms let's hear from you let's hear your thoughts what you think what you feel about these matters here on bible hard talks tonight what we're gonna do we're gonna throw the cables to prince tyler he is here he's right and ready to talk to us about this matter prince tyler cables are yours my soldier how's it because basically there are two major things that humans are fully capable of. The first thing that we're fully capable of is the idea of anthropomorphism. That is to say that sometimes we have the ability to, of course, assign like a lot of human behavior, ideas, and thoughts to objects, things, or abstract ideas. And another thing that humans have the capability of is the idea of like we have hypersensitive agencies, right? So sometimes we can see stuff that think that have intention behind it, but at the same time, it might not have exact intention behind it. Let's take, for example, the case of ghosts, right? When someone, of course, open or closes the door, we can see a person just opening and closing the door. But there are some days where the door just opens directly by itself. And so what exactly is the thing that actually, of course, opens the door by itself? Because sometimes people will say it must be a ghost that might have opened the door directly. 
But they can also be like a number of different factors that are also very much naturalistic and process. It could be a number of things. For example, a person might have forgot to close the door when they got out. That's like one factor. Another factor could be the fact that the wind sometimes opened the door. And so there are naturalistic explanations on why the door is actually open. And so we don't necessarily need a supernatural explanation on why the door is actually open. So the first thing that people cite when it comes down to the issue of demons is that they have visions of demons. And of course, early in the conversation, I established the difference between evidence and proof, right? So their evidence is that they experience demons, that they have sights of demons, right? The first thing I had to say is that I have an anecdote to show you guys to actually talk about this whole entire issue. My anecdote is that when I was about, you know, 13 or 14 years old, I was really, really big into horror movies, right? I would like watch like the most gory stuff or like the most crazy stuff. And one of the movies I remember seeing when I was about 13, 14 years old was the movie that was called The Exodus. Now, everybody in this room probably know what exactly is The Exodus. It was made in 1972. It starred Linda Blair, right? And so basically she has the whole entire makeup on her, right? To look like she's demonic. In the movie, what she does it's that she has like her whole entire head sped around the circle, right? That's like one aspect. Another aspect was that she w could walk like backwards, like another aspect right there. Another aspect was that she has this really deep voice and said, your father will cock, like, you know, cock and hell, something like that, right? And so basically I would watch this movie. And as soon as I watched that movie, I would have these type of visions of Linda Blair. And so it would be like a really, really dark room. And so I would see the face of Linda Blair in the dark and I cannot stop not seeing it, right? And so even when I went to sleep, right, and closed my eyes, I would have the worst kind of nightmares of Linda Blair. <laughs> and so that was like a really, really fun experience when I was like younger. And I guess the main point of that antidote is to say that as I got older, I realized the main reason why I would see something like Linda Blair in the dark room or in my dreams is because I actually internalized the images of Linda Blair to my brain. So everything that happened to me with Linda Blair was all about brain activity. So when people are saying that they have, of course, visions of demons, I think it's also directly connected to the brain because if a person was directly raised and a Christian, and of course, like, you know, they have church and everything else and everybody believe in demons, of course, they're going to have confirmation bias based upon their own personal surroundings and so they're going to internalize the image of demons based upon what they believe in they already believe it anyway and that's when the vision starts to trigger i think that's the main reason why people have these type of visions that's the first aspect the second aspect is the ideas of exorcism now in the past people used to do exorcism of course other people because they thought like a lot of stuff that people had were actually of course like you know bad and because of demons right now, it seems as though that the main reason why people look so possessed for other people is like a number of factors. For starters, they have hysteria, they have mania, they have schizophrenia. There's also something that is known as monomania, or basically a person actually believes that they're possessed by more than one demon. And I guess the question is, like, why do they actually think that they're possessed by more than one demon. And I would say, because they were raised in the church environment, because they talk about demons, because they already believe in demons, I think that's also the main reason why they thought they were also demons. So it's basically a placebo effect right there. Another aspect that people bring up is the idea of the Ouija boards. But we do know that the Ouija boards are actually caused by something that is known as the ideomotor effect. And what exactly is the ideomotor effect? Basically, the ideomotor effect is the idea that someone can actually move something up subconsciously without even knowing them, right? And so a person can already believe in the idea of a demon, and when they play the game, they basically unsubconsciously move the board by themselves, while a person who is actually a skeptic, who don't necessarily believe in the idea of demons, can do the exact same thing, but it will not necessarily work at all. And so I think the main reason why a lot of this stuff happened is largely 
because of natural causes. That's the first thing. The other question is, do I think that witchcraft is real? I don't believe in witchcraft either. I don't believe in demons, ghosts, witchcrafts, deities. So anything that evokes the supernatural, I don't necessarily believe in that. That's the other thing. The other question is, are demons behind all evil on earth? Since you guys are Christians, right, you guys are probably familiar with the verse of Isaiah. I am the one that creates good and evil. So hypothetically, that would mean that if God is the creator of the entire universe, he creates everything, that would mean he caused demons, and therefore God will be the ones that cause the suffering. I mean, if you're going to say that he's actually all-powerful, that would mean hypothetically that he still wants to have evil happen in the world anyway because he already created the demons anyway. And so that's my response to, I guess, the question so far. Prince Tyler. Right, Prince Tyler, thank you very much for that. Thanks for coming through on Bible Hot Talks to talk to us here yeah, tonight. Now, uh, you began there with that door analogy. Like, um, if, you know, the door opens itself, if you are, you know, you open, shut the door um, as, you know, as, as kind of common behavior. You're saying that if that happens, you know, um, and then suddenly the door just opens itself. You're saying that that doesn't need a supernatural explanation, really. The door can, you know, open up by itself. That is like a wind, the wind, for example. Or if someone forgot um, to shut the door. And you're saying that, yeah, it doesn't really need a supernatural explanation. And then, of course, issues of visions, you know, um, visions of, 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 of demons. You're saying that, well, you have an experience as a 13-year-old uh, boy, a handsome-looking uh, boy, brave, um, sharp-minded fella, You're saying that we were watching this movie, um, Exorcist, and there there was there were some brain activities uh, as an aftermath of that movie experience, and then you started seeing you know weird things there, but it doesn't really mean that they existed, but it was just you know a brain activity, it was just a trick of the mind uh, there, and then you are saying that there is also we shouldn't forget that element of confirmation biasness uh, as whether it's believers or whether it's people who are exposed um, to watching such movies like exorcist for example that you know um you can have that confirmation biasness just because you believe in something and then you see something and then you can play a trick on your mind i guess it's like something of you know um when you are walking in the night prince tyler um you know walking in the night and you are afraid all of a sudden just a pole a black pole you start seeing a, a man that is walking towards your direction and yet it's just you know a pole that is there so i, I guess we are talking of uh, issues like that and of course we are saying that yeah, well if we look at you know issues of exorcism uh, you know um this really again is just placebo effect because i mean um you may have schizophrenia monomania uh, it's just placebo effect it's not something that really is there uh and then of course you don't believe in demons you don't believe in witchcraft you don't believe in the supernatural and you are touching on that kind of sensitive pattern there you know uh quoting the prophet isaiah and you're saying that well it seems like if god really you know uh, creates good and evil then god is the cause of evil he created evil because he is the creator of the good and evil very interesting thank you very much prince tyler there um thank you very much for coming through on on, on, on bible hard talks yeah very interesting indeed prince tyler prince tyler um some things have you ever have you ever encountered something or heard of something that is just mysterious that you can't really explain you can't uh you can't use science to explain it uh you can't you can't philosophize it either uh, but it it is a reality. It's something that is there, whether for you in, in your experience or maybe uh, somebody else. Have you ever heard of anything like that in, in your lifetime? I mean, I haven't had that personally. Like I said earlier, I had an experience where basically I saw Linda Blair's face in the dark. <laughs> That's the closest kind of experience I ever had because I was like watching that movie, The Exorcist. But um, even if it was the fact the case that we have an, a phenomenon that we have yet to discover. I think the best bet is not to jump the gun, it's to say that you just don't know. And once we find the answer for something that we just don't know, we can just you know test it out and see what exactly is the phenomenon. Like for example, in the past, people had no idea how rain actually evaporates into the air or how lightning actually strikes down. And so, of course, they would use, like, you know, Zeus or Store as the explanation on why the lighting goes down and the rain goes up and so on. 
And so I think like a lot of the argumentation comes from our ignorance based upon these things that we have yet to discover. And so what I'm trying to advocate, what I'm trying to say is that even if it's the case that you have a phenomenon that you have no idea, it's okay to say that you just simply don't know. Thank you, Nihi. Um, I think that this uh, conversation is is very interesting because here's where I I find that I get into a lot of I shouldn't call them arguments. It's maybe like debates with my atheist friends. Um, first of all, I think that uh, I think the belief in demons and evil spirits is a little bit problematic. Because in my view, I feel like um, these things are made up by the human imagination to abdicate responsibility for bad human actions, you know. And so, like, I I really hate this, uh, you know, angle because um, it, we 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 often get into philosophical debates about good and evil and, and what is morality and is morality objective or subjective. And in my, in my view, um, most, most morality is subjective because you can look at an act and you can say that it is bad, but when you look at it in the perspective of another person, it may not always be bad. So, you know, I, I feel like even like the, the like, calling a spirit evil right like like okay let's let's pretend for a second that like spirits exist like souls exist spirit spirits exist blah, blah, blah. like to call a, a, a spirit evil like what does that entail and usually what they will say is that this evil spirit causes the very physical and real human being that we can all see to do horrible things so I I don't subscribe to the belief that evil spirits exist. Uh, I think that that is just, you know, uh, you know, it, it's a it's the opposite side of the coin of, um, you know, people who believe in a god. They will tell you like I do good things. I am I am a good person because God wants me to be a good person. No, you did good things because you that is your nature. That is what you do. Right. You you as a human being took did the good act and now you want to, uh, you know, attribute it to something else. You as the human being did the horrible act and now you want to attribute it to something else. But I do think that the the the, uh, the conversation becomes more interesting, like when we when we ask ourselves does the human soul exist? Do spirits exist at all? And I, I take the opinion that there are so many parts of the human experience that are inexplicable. Um, so many stories that I've heard that <laughs> by what, by what we can observe shouldn't be. I think that, um, uh, the, the Jude guy, I think his name, Pastor Jude, the person that was just speaking named one of these incidences, where you do have cases of psychics who claim that they saw something and they help in police investigations. You have stories of children who remember their past lives and talk about, uh, you know, remembering how they died. You have cases in which people dream of events and then find themselves living those events. We call that deja vu. I think that even if you were to say that these incidences are like a, like sort of a, like a, a, a aftertaste that our brain is, is creating, we have no way of proving that. Like science has not come, you know, is not advanced to the point of proving that these can be explained through what we can see and what we can measure. So I think that, and, and, and also I think that when we think about like, who we were as people before, like, you know, the first human beings, I'm pretty sure that the things that we are doing today would seem miraculous to them. You know, I, I'm talking about like Neanderthal days, caveman days. I'm sure that the fact that we can get in a vehicle and then move our point ourselves from point, from point A to point B or get in a plane and like go to different countries if you were to ask them, they would probably say it's an act of God because it's not something that they can experience during their time. And I think that 
it, I think that once you talk about like the human spirit, it could just very well be a symptom of the human experience, you know, because I one of the things that is very problematic about, you know, the higher power thing is like you're like attributing authority to something that you are saying is not equal to you. But a spirit and a soul, if one such thing were to exist, that is just a characteristic of the human. You know, it is an equal thing. It's not like you're a, a, ascribing authority to it. It's not like you're saying that it is making you do one thing or the other. It's just a part of you. So I don't even think believing in it is that problematic because there are parts of us that we can't explain all the time. Emotions. We, we, don't, we don't know what a mind looks like. We don't know what really governs emotions, right? Uh, you know, science can explain, oh, like there's this limbic system in the brain and blah, 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 blah. But it's not very specific as to, okay, what governs happiness? What governs sadness? Like there's so many parts of, of humanity that you can't explain. So I guess I'll conclude to say that I'm agnostic on this issue. Like I don't know. And I'm, I tend to believe that it is possible that spirits exist, but I wouldn't as ascribe goodness or evilness to them because I just, I just don't think it makes sense to do that. Like it's just a, a characteristic uh, of a human person. Righty, thank you very much, Tay. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, interesting indeed there. Um, yeah, you you are looking at this matter, especially when we're looking at, you know, um, um, spiritual realities. You're saying that, well, you know, when I'm demons, for example, if you're spirits, we're saying that, well, when we look at this matter, really, it might as well be just human imaginations here uh, to shield bad behavior. So then they must just appeal to evil spirits. Um, but in reality, really, evil spirits, they don't exist. You know, there are many parts of the human um um, there are many parts of the human being or the human body or the, the human composition that you are saying that they are inexplicable. You know, um, stories of children who remember their past lives, uh, deja vu experiences, all these things, they just happen. And we really don't know how to really, you know, uh, put them together in a way that will make sense. I mean, if we just kind of step back a bit, uh, we go back to... Um, um, some civilizations before us, you are saying that, well, they will look at this modern um, civilization, the activities of the modern civilization. You will say that they will think these are miracles. Good Lord, what is this? Um, and of course, you are saying that, you know, the spirit and the soul, uh, if, it is, if, if it does exist, it, it shouldn't, it's just, you know, a part of the human being, our human composition. It's not anything superior. It's not anything supreme. Uh, we shouldn't think of it like that. And it's possible that spirits do exist, you're saying. It's possible. But they shouldn't be uh, neither good nor bad. Very interesting there. Uh, very interesting there, Tay. Uh, thank you very much for your take here, uh, Tay. Now, if spirits, Tay, you're saying that they, they do exist, that's, that's like, it's possible. You, you At least to a certain extent, you open that window that it's possible that they do exist. Uh, why do you think um, they shouldn't, you know, bear the identity of being good or bad? Um, why, why, why is it problematic for the spirit to be, um, to be good, for example? Why, or why is it problematic for the spirit to be, to be bad? So, um, I, there's two reasons. Number one, again, I think that this is human beings trying to create a barrier between themselves and their actions. You did it, you, your whole person, you, you did what you did. OK, so I feel I, I often find that, like, when we bring up evil spirits, it's in an attempt to shield ourselves from actions that we are ashamed of, because, you know, like people who do things and they're proud of what they do, they don't say, oh, an evil spirit made me do it is because you feel shame, you know, shame. And then that is when you like cr craft this thing that no one can see or observe and say that it is because of that thing that you did it and there's no way to prove it that's why you do it because it's like one of these areas where like who, who's gonna tell you no you know so that's the first th reason why the second reason why is that 
if they exist, I I just think that it is it is a description of a human being, right? Like you wouldn't look at your arm and say, this is an evil arm or this is a good arm. This is just a part of you. Like it's just an extension of you, the person. You know, there are, there are parts of our body that when we existed a long time ago, they were re relevant, they were functional. We call them vestigial structures. Most people don't know that human beings actually have tails. Um, when you are in the womb, you still have that tail. When you are born, that tail kind of, you know, dissolves or, or whatever it is. It shows you that in times prior, human beings or what we are now calling human beings used to have a function for that, you know, whatever, right? Is the fact that the tail, that human beings no longer walk around with tails, does that mean that, you know, tails are evil and so God decided to take them away? No, it is a symptom of a, a part of ourselves, you know? So I, I, I would view it like that. You know, I am a black woman. I am, uh, you know, I'm five, six, you know, I am Nigerian and I have a soul. Like these are descriptions of who I am. So to, to call, to call it good or evil, like it just, it just doesn't make sense to me. I just think that that is like what, like mind games that people play with themselves. Alrighty, um, thank you very much, um, there, Tay. Very interesting indeed. We'll come back there. We'll come back to that. Um, it's, it's quite an interesting take that you are putting on the table here. That's quite an interesting one. All right, ladies and gents, the conversation is still on here on Bible Hot Talks, Dark Mirror. Demons and evil spirits don't exist. That's where we are. That's what we are talking about. Thank you very much for being here. Please speak to <laughs> people. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm not well, well, but this is very interesting. No, I want to greet you, brother Box. It's been quite a while. Um, it's been a while, it's been a while indeed, man of God. It's been a while indeed, but <laughs> it's good to have you here. You are here when we are dealing with these matters. I'm about to exercise, <laughs> I'm about to deliver, I'm about to <laughs> cast out and call fire and brimstone and just commit witchcraft miracles and stuff. <laughs> My God. <laughs> uh, well, I wanted to do the formal administration here. Now I'm being said by the host. Anyway, greetings to the family. Yeah, big brains, big guns here. Yeah. Brother Bongs, just before I... I respond to the questions or, or make my submission how are we such topics would not uh, birth arguments and contrasts but rather i would love to see a situation where people would voice their perspective and present where they're referencing from so we have views in such matters because truth truth is for instance tyler perry is a man with Google and he's got a lot of papers before him, trust me. He pages in every space that I, whenever I come here, he's paging through what he printed out, poor guy. Um, and then <laughs> he speaks from a scientific or psychological perspective, right? But then now it becomes a problem because he doesn't present his case. He presents his case to oppose. Uh, Nihilist is the smartest of them all. And how I wish you could present from his perspective and the referencing thereof without truly being looking for a way to uh, somehow demonize others' view of it. And we would have a beautiful view. But anyway, I guess that's how it rolls. Now, the question is, demons and evil spirit, do they or don't they exist? My answer to that is directly, of course they do exist. And the next question says, are they even conscious of our existence, our person, and even this world of the tangible? Of course they are. Remember, Brother Bongs, uh, I'm speaking from strictly biblical context. My reference is the, the Bible. Colossians 1 and 15 highlights that he is the creator of them all, visible and visible, powers, principalities, and you name them. And I'm saying anybody who may question, biblically speaking, the existence of the evil spirits and demons would equally have to question the existence of God. 
because the presence or the existence of demons points you to a creator, their creator, and it leads you therefore to God. Now, as soon as you question their existence, you cannot be going on about a God. Um, that's basically that. And I need to say, maybe, maybe the problem could be, again, religiously speaking now, the over-exaggeration of the competencies of these spirits is where the issue is. And equally, the ignorance we have concerning the, the spirits and their existence and their efficacies is also a problem. What do I mean by that? Those who are Christian like me and believe in ways of dealing with spirits and demons, they go overboard when dealing with them. And somehow they give almost the same rank of power to demons as with God. And, and that sometimes becomes a greater problem and a confusing factor. Yet again, if we do not know about them as well, it becomes a problem because we're going to argue their existence while they're acting on us. Just like somebody who would say there is no force of gravity because they can't see it. It's intangible. It's an abstract. It's an imaginary jump. All you need to do is to jump. Then you, your discovery will be granted with your broken necks and br uh, braces around your neck. That's if you survive, depending on the, on the altitude you would have attempted from. Let me say this and then he yield back the mic. These things do exist, Brother Bones. They, they really do. It's only unfortunate that you would not have to take them into a laboratory in order to determine and come up with tangible evidence thereof. However, we're going to engage at the very, very dimensions. I would speak from experience and encounters, personal experiences and encounters, and you've got Tyler Perry, who is so Googled in approach, and it becomes a problem because whatever he's reading down, he, he is convinced, uh, as much as I am convinced from what I'm deducing from the Word of God, and equally my personal experience is dealing with things, dealing with people. Yeah, uh, let me perhaps rest it there, hopefully before uh, the following day, <laughs> I would have gotten a chance again. All right. Pastor B, Pastor B, Pastor B. Thank you very much. I'm mean, of God for that. Thank you very much for coming through Bible Heart Talks to share uh, your mind with us and your experience. Though you didn't go deeper, maybe I forgot to say, go deeper, Papa, there to just, um yeah, see you uh, touching um further on these matters. But thank you very much uh, on, on this point that we have touched here. Um, demons and evil spirits, they exist. Uh, they do exist, you're saying that. I mean, you are giving this, you're looking at this matter from a, a biblical worldview. Um, you know, the existence of demons, of course, they inevitably point uh, towards the existence of God. And you are really kind of, you know, adamant about the fact that God exists. So um, that it's 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 an irrefutable fact. And, and of course, you are saying, which is a very interesting point, there are some realities that are not just, you know, explained but tested when you are looking, when you are talking about the, uh, the force of gravity, that we can argue, you know, back and forth if it exists, if it doesn't, if it works, if it doesn't. But at the end of the day, we have to test that. And when we test it, um, you just make a jump and tell us what happens then. You're saying that your bones will be broken. And I think in perspective, you're saying that this matter that we're dealing with here uh, is, 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 is the same case that we need, you know, it must be tested. We can't just, you know, deal with it from a theoretical point of view, but it must be in a tangible sense tested. Very interesting, men of God, for that. Um, thank you very much. Um, in, 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 and just briefly, Pastor B, I know that there are some that would like, like to to engage you here. In, 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 in kind of, in, in a, in a brief sense, there, um, how can we i mean like if they are to be to be tested someone can 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 want you to explain in a much deeper sense for example you spoke about you know um jokingly so uh, talking about you know casting demons and in ministering deliverance ministers in those instances let's say someone is um it's manifested uh, by demons uh deliverance must be must be actuated in that sense the demons that kind of, you know, occupied um, that particular individual, is it the possession, is it based on the spirit being conscious of that person? They like, they purposed, like, I want to attack, 
uh, individual A, and they went all out for that. They are, they are conscious of that person. Or they or it happened that the person was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. It was a straight bullet. How how does it, how does it play out, man of God? Vulnerability uh, in a number of ways. You you've got to be vulnerable. Uh, one of the dimensions of vulnerability is ignorance or denial to their existence, as it is the case in this in this debate. Um, that's the first thing. And the second thing is, remember these spirits, in order for them to continue existing and living on planet Earth, um, we believe they need to be legalized by having a body they could occupy. Now, they occupy on the perspective, as I indicated, of vulnerability, they will find you vulnerable. And another thing that I need to highlight, Brother Bongs, is that um, these things have got mandate. They are not only seeking for residential address and occupy a person. They target people they, they um, occupy with objectives um, in mind. And their objective is just to derail people from God. <laughs> I almost said something naughty. But they seeking the ultimate objective is to get people off God uh, for reasons known, because by so doing, they buy in their time. So their ultimate objective is not to get you to become a whatever else that you become or to do whatever wrong that you do. It's so that you do that, but the chief end is that you are far from God. Therefore, they will target people and they those who are in their camp already, they don't have issues. They're targeting people like your pastor bees who's seeking to prove the existence of God, well, not to prove, to proclaim the existence of God. And they will come my way. If they can't possess me, they will therefore begin to seek to influence me by hitting from any direction, particularly on things that matter. you know. And then some will be uh, possessed, or these things will take control, because by possession we mean they, take, they have an ultimate say on your conduct, to seek to get you to come to a place where you would help combat uh, Pastor B. I think it it may it will make sense if we look at the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, how it it is uh, operating. It does reflect the the same way uh, these things uh, operate. Just so I can make sense of what I'm saying, you can't take Pastor B from the hand of God. In order to do that, you need to find a way, or you can't hit Pastor B while in the hand of in the hand of God. So you need to find a way to remove him. That's what the demon's objectives would be. Like it was the case, I had somebody mentioning Balaam the prophet and Balak the king in the case of the Israel, Israelites having to be, be, be bewitched. In essence, Brother Bones, the objective behind possessing people, it's, it's riding and thriving on the vulnerability of the possessed. But the ultimate goal is to see that people doubt the existence of God People question the existence of God and people are driven further and further from God so that the devil gets more time with his bunch of demons. I hope I've answered. Yeah, so uh, our brother mentioned a very fundamental aspect that obviously you need to be born again. You need to be saved. Uh, but another issue that makes you vulnerable uh, to demonic attacks or demonic pos uh, possession is uh, the issue of uh, uh, knowingly and voluntarily participating in sin that is of the nature of rebellion. So you have a man of God, Saul, who out of jealousy, he makes the decision that he is going to kill David. And when he makes that decision, the Bible says that God sent or allowed for a distressing spirit. This is believed to be a demonic spirit to possess him. And because of that decision, right, he, it was outright rebellion. He made a conscious decision, I'm going to kill an innocent brother, an innocent man of God. David had done absolutely nothing to Saul. He had done nothing. It was all over a song that some ladies sang, and he was jealous about it. And he made that conscious decision, I'm going to kill my brother. And that 
opened him up to demon possession. You fast forward to the New Testament, Judas, the exact same thing. Out of greed, wanting money, he makes a conscious decision. He knows very well that Jesus Christ is an innocent man. He said, he said the very same things, uh, the very same thing to the priest that have betrayed innocent blood. So he knew that Jesus was innocent, but he made a, he made a conscious decision. I'm going to betray this man for 30 pieces of silver. And that is when the Bible says, then Satan entered him. So those are the type of things that make people, even a born again Christian, vulnerable. It opens you up to demon possession. Thank you very much, Bishop Lunga. Thank you very much uh, for that. All right, ladies and gents, we're still here on Bible Hot Talks, Dark Mirror. Demons and evil spirits don't exist. That's where we are. That's what we are dealing with here on Bible Hot Talks. Uh, let's go to Prof. Tardy. Prof. Tardy, cables are yours, I was saying. Hey, to, the, to the topic at hand, right, um, demons. Uh, I think the smartest thing that the devil has ever done is to make himself a joke himself and his minions to be a joke so that no one ever takes him serious and in so doing what that automatically does is that no one takes god serious at the same time. Okay, how can i put it a double jeopardy when you, you believe in, in 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 god you have to automatically also believe in the existence of uh, the devil and vice versa if you think the devil is a joke then automatically god becomes also a joke and um, a fictitious uh, figure and that's what the devil has done you, whether you're talking about mainstream media, he has tried his most to make himself a joke or in adult entertainment to make himself maybe a, 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 just a, another a cosplay or another a, a Halloween costume that you could put on, right? Um, but what he has not done is to make his life uh, or ways of living life a joke. No, he has just made them dominant by making himself a joke. So that was a very smart move. He makes it it's of a joke, then God is a joke, then the morality of God is a joke, then there's no subjective truth, uh, there's also no subject, there's no um, objective truth, and there's no objective morality. Therefore, we can do as we will, do thou art will, uh, Alistair Crowley, a uh, witchcraft, and, and this is for my brothers who, who also read a lot around towards uh, witchcraft. I'm going me and Prince Tyler are familiar with uh, this uh, chap I'm talking about, right? Uh, <clears throat> you see, so uh, that's what he does. He then breaks moral. Then you have people also like my sister that then say, so everything else is subjective, and our morality is therefore subjective. The question I would have for her is, are we saying that sleeping with children that are eight years old uh, is, is, is subjective morality? Would we agree uh, right now to say, oh, no, that is subjective. It depends on the society, so maybe that is subjective. Are we saying that the, the, the meddling of people is also subjective? Um, in, 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 okay, in, in, in our normal state where we have we're going to say those things are subjective, but we're now moving towards that uh, conclusion because of how we have fallen for this whole joke and in so doing, broken down the, broken down the, 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 the morals of the society. That's why you now have uh, two-year-olds that can, uh, uh, in courts, that can dictate what gender they are, in courts, uh, dictate when they want to have transitions. Uh, the list is endless. Um, that's why you now have people that can also dictate what they are going to sleep with. Uh, let's never, for those that talk about science, let's not even bring in a zoonotic a diseases crossover. We no longer worry about all that because we have bought into the line, right? And so that is what I'm disagreeing with. It's not a joke. Uh, the demons, uh, uh, which are actually angels, and I'll touch that as my third point, um, um, are also not a joke. It's just that they, they, they benefit from presenting themselves as a joke uh, because that actually emphasizes uh, people those entities would prefer us to. And I think the, the world is now being shaped in their image, and you can see it in your day-to-day -day lives. Um, the, the other proof that I'll present that these folks are not jokes uh, is the consistence of one of those demons, Bao. 
Uh, for those that are not familiar with him, the Blue God. Uh, I think most recently he made his appearance in the Commonwealth uh, Games and in the time when he was there. And then for the longest time, he has been dominating the center of uh, world economics there in New York uh, and, and people paying homage. And if you go as far back, 6,000 years, uh, 4,000 years, 2,000 years recorded history, you will see him. He is consistent. Um, so, so these guys are not jokes, and we cannot also say that we are people that are not creative, that we constantly have to conjure the same image of a bull and, and put it at the center of everything that we do. Guys, come on, it's been 6,000 years, are you telling me we can't be creative and maybe at least? So, uh, that's another that I am presenting as proof uh, for the consistency of, 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 of these demons uh, being at the centerpiece of uh, human life. Uh, then we move on to the issue of um, a, anyone. Uh, okay, I, I think what I wanted to touch on was the creation aspect. Uh, people said um, if you admit that there are demons and then you also say, the angels, and one is evil, one is good, so therefore God is the creator of evil. Uh, I don't know which Christians have ever denied that, and if they are, I think they have to read again the, the, the Holy Scriptures. God has never denied that he is the creator of demons, angels, and the devil himself. Uh, he, he even boasts that those are some of his top creations. However, he did not create what the, the, the he did not create the path they had to walk. They chose to walk that path out of uh, selfish reasons. We can give the example of those that were pleased by the beauty of the daughters of men. Then they took that path. We can speak of that felt prey to wanting to be praised or thinking that they are equal uh, to the Creator or more beautiful and therefore should be bowed down uh, in the same way as the creator. So it's envy that then turns them into what they are. So it- You're saying that, you know, um, demons do exist. The tricky thing is that we don't understand their activities. We don't understand how, how they function, but they do exist. Uh, we, m- we must know that. And, and, and our limited understanding on their operation does not necessarily mean, you know, non-existence. They do exist. And we just need to know how they function. That's very interesting. Uh, Pastor Edwin, someone can say they challenge you and say that, well, uh, you are too much focused on on, on, on demons. I mean, the yeah, obsession, once you are obsessed, I think Prince Tyler was talking about this even in the beginning. Um, that it's it's really kind of a, a, a placebo effect but because of your obsession because of you know these are brain activities the moment you are you are so much you know um so much invested in these things uh you will start believing them to be true in in other words in the words of prince tyler as uh, is is um these cognitive biases so in 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 that sense how would you um, counter anyone that is saying that no, it's because you are obsessed, my good sir and because you are obsessed over these things of course you will see them, they will become your reality, but they are not necessarily a reality, it's just a figment of your imagination you know, uh, my problem with human nature uh, is that I'm beginning to realize in my old age how gullible humans are uh, let's go to a contemporary situation could you believe that 80 million Americans can vote for somebody like Trump who lies and continues to lie? Before Trump, I could never have believed it. But after Trump, I'm having this second uh, you know, introspection about human nature. And you find what you are looking at in America today in all these issues we are talking about. These uh, born locations, born in Johannesburg, grow up in Johannesburg, you never go to the rural areas. Maybe they are ignorant of what happens out there. So, but so my pa- own... Pastor Edwin, are you saying then uh, that um, demons and evil spirits, they are, they are, they are, they are rural, uh, rural phenomena? They don't exist in the cities. They don't exist. They are afraid of the city life. Um, what's going on there? No, no, no. 
that's not the point. When you are, if you are likely to find fake healers, African healers, you're going to find them mostly in the cities. In the rural areas, if you fake, they'll get to you sooner or later. In towns, they get away with a lot of this fakeism. But the point about it is that if you accept that there is something called magic, I don't see why you would have a problem understanding a lot of the things we don't do, we do not understand today. Uh, the whole issue of magic, it's a barrier that we do not understand. Only a few people understand how this magic world uh, w- w- works. Uh, and I think it was Nihi who was talking about this, uh, t- uh, Nihi and Tadi were talking about this dry stick that turns into a snake. Now, that's a little bit of godly magic right there that we don't understand and we are unlikely to understand. But don't go to the point of saying that does not happen because it happens until you are able to unravel this whole magic thing. You should not, never get to a point of saying it does not happen because you have not experienced it. Luckily for us with technology, we are now beginning to get insights in how this world that was completely hidden from us, especially some of us who grew in who grew up during the uh, you know white rule, some of these uh, witchcraft issues were suppressed by law. For some reason, our governments are letting it lay out there loose, and they are practicing it in the open. And the people who admit to killing people are not being pres- you know pros- prosecuted. We are beginning to see a new, uh, you know, we're getting new insights in how these things are working. But our universities have not yet gotten to the, into the habit of investigating this phenomena and see if maybe we can get a better handle on what exactly is happening. You know, witches, they say you can sleep next to a witch if you are married to one. The witch will uh, live somehow, and the body is still lying next to you, and go and do the witchcraft, and then come back, they are now beginning to confess to how they operate. But to say that we understand how that whole issue works, you know, we don't. And this is where we are. We need we need to form that platform to say we are here, but where do we go from uh, from from here? But to hear somebody who will come to this platform and say witchcraft does not exist, and so really that's a bit of ignorance there, because we can now bring evidence that shows that there is something called witchcraft, and we can bring the confessions. We can help you visit some of the graves. Uh, a case of uh, six children would die within, let's say, three or four years. Uh, and then finally the witch is caught and they, they confess. You know, we need to study these things, but not to pretend that they don't exist because the white men told us these things don't happen. They lied just as much as they are lying about some issues with the Bible. The yeah. Catholics tell us that they can sprinkle water on you and you are baptized. Yeah. And look at how many... <laughs> But billions of people are believing that. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.